everyone, Paul Cram here. I am thrilled today to be talking with Kathy Reinking, author of How to Book Acting Jobs 3.0, Through the Eyes of a Casting Director Across All Platforms. Sometimes when you ask somebody why you want to be an actor, they say, I like to be other people. Like I like mm-hmm. being other people. Um, and that's kind of not the way to go. The, the thing is, you got to reveal yourself. Um, Kathy Reinking has been a Hollywood casting director since the early 1990s, working on Frasier, Arrested Development, and many other shows, pilots, films, theater, web series, and commercials. She served as NBC's manager of casting and holds a degree in theater arts from UCLA. Here we go. You mentioned, too, that you're, you're familiar with the Twin Cities a little bit. Yeah, a lot. Um, yeah, I've, I've gone to the Guthrie probably 10 years in a row. The BFA program there, that's through the university, uh, invited me to go see their BFA graduating class for about 10 years and, and maybe more. And it was the highlight of my year to go downtown in April. <laughs> so it was always like an incredible time. <laughs> yeah, no, that's awesome. The Guthrie is, I mean, it's a staple here. So yeah, I know the Guthrie. Cool. I, I, when I was in college, I dreamed of working at the Guthrie. Uh, never imagined I would be a casting director and then they would like invite me there. So that was pretty exciting. Well, and I know the answer to this question a little bit because you do touch on, on it in your book a little bit. Um, do you mind telling people, where are you from originally? Because you weren't born in Atlanta. I was not born in Atlanta, <laughs> uh, although I wish I were just because I really love it here. Um, I was born in Hollywood, like in the city of Hollywood. Um um, Which is so, so rare. I, just I know to it's say. so rare. Um, <laughs> people don't realize that Native Angelinos, we usually are first generation Americans. Um, my father was a refugee and my mother was an immigrant and they met in, in Hollywood. And um, and that's but yeah, a lot of it's it's really surprising. The Native Angelinos tend to be. Uh, more down to earth, I guess, than you would imagine. <laughs> I, that that makes sense. I've I've spent some time, um, a little bit of time here and there uh, in Los Angeles, and yeah, I'm just I'm surprised. It's awesome to meet someone who was actually from there because everybody that I was interacting with as a transplant, and I think what you're saying is really true because from my interactions and from reading your book and everything, I'm like, no, this person has such a warm a warm take on a warm soul, I guess I would say. Um, <laughs> You're welcome. Um, which actually I do want to dive into a little bit. Um, okay. I mean, I am a huge, I, you know, I, I love to read and I, um, I actually came across this book cause you, you visited, um, Catalyst, uh, up in Duluth. And, uh, yeah. Last, uh, no, two years ago now. Yeah. Yeah. It was a couple of years ago now. Cause obviously 2020 happened. Yeah. Um, and I came across this book and I was reading it and I was like, Oh my gosh, like, Again, I don't need to repeat everything in the book and we don't need to dive into all of it. But I mean, just the information and everything that you're providing, you know, for actors is really, really good information. Uh, In addition to that, the thing that I think I really was hoping to touch with you on, like, I think it's chapter eight, but it's sprinkled throughout the entire thing. Like, you really start to talk about like artists and business people and like kind of a work-life balance and what that that looks like. And then also, I even, I have it earmarked here. Um, I think you even say in here, like, if you feel like you've given away a piece of your soul to be an artist or an actor, um, here's some things that you can do to like uh, make a list and of your core values. Mm -hmm. Where does this come from? Like, how did you get to, I mean, it's wise. It's, it's very wise and it's very inspiring as me for me as like an artist, as a creator. Um, can you expound on that a little bit more? I hope I'm not just like put, I, I don't know. I, I'm curious to hear more. Well, I think with any corporation, really any profession, there's a fantasy of that profession. And then the reality is a little bit more murky. <laughs> um, so if you're a good person at your core, like you have good values, sometimes they can be compromised if you're put in a very stressful position. And entertainment is incredibly stressful. If you're at the upper echelons, I mean, I spent basically 10 years at the upper echelons of television at every major network. I did shows at every major network. And there was, you know, there was no Netflix then <laughs> or <you> know, streaming <laughs> platforms. Yeah, but, you yeah. know, a lot of times you have to compromise some of your values to sort of get along. And I think that's, that's true in any big profession, whether it's lawyers or doctors or anything, really. 
So yeah, it's how no, do you absolutely. balance that? How do you sometimes compromise what you really believe in for the project or for the people in charge of the project? Um, I and, and yeah, and and like when you say that, do you mean even to the point like what what I know that that would look different for every person because everybody has different core values, you know what I mean? So, um like for myself, like I've done a fair amount of character work and I've done these obnoxious roles and um, some of them required nudity. And I'm like, I have, I've had to sit and be like, how do I feel about this? And I'm like, usually I'm like, I'm, I'm fine. But I know there's a lot of people that wouldn't be. Is that kind of, I don't know, I don't know. Yeah, that is kind of. Um, and also just if the project, if the main themes of it or if the slant of it is, is negative or it's portraying negative stereotypes, there was a lot of times when I worked on even Emmy winning shows and, you know, in the nineties, there was a lot of negative stereotyping and we oh, were absolutely. talking about it now, but it wasn't then. And, you know, casting is below the line. So we can't really say anything if something bothers us in a script, you know? It, it, well, uh, yeah, as an actor, I think it would be, unless you're, Unless you're really, the writer, unless you're the writer, producer, yeah, I mean, or potentially the A-list actor, that's you know, and even the a I mean, really, the 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 in television, the writer, the writer slash producer is mm -hmm. everything. They run the show. Yeah. So you're, you know, when you're um, wanting to critique um, one of the top writer <laughs> producers in television, it's tricky. You can't really do that. It's an unspoken, you know. And so I also feel like my voice got muted because I didn't feel comfortable really stating my opinions of particular and roles. Have you, has that changed or morphed over the years? Have you? Well, now that I have more control of what I work on and <laughs> <laughs> I'm creating my own content now and helping others create their own content, I get to be in charge of the, um, the roles and in charge of the themes and in charge of what something's saying. So that's one reason why I'm not casting full time is because I want to have full control over the content now as well. And it sounds like you're, if I'm not mistaken, it sounds like you're, is that more fulfilling? Is it not more fulfilling? Like, um, gosh, there's pros and cons to everything, you know, because when yeah. I was working in the upper echelons of TV, I mean, that was my whole identity and I felt really important and coming from a very <laughs> poor background and not having you know, a lot of the uh, advantages um, that I felt that I didn't belong sometimes. So mm -hmm. it, it, you know, it was an ego trip to have such a great job. Well, and how did you get started in that? Like you mentioned that you grew up in, in Los Angeles, like was casting something that you always had a passion no, for? No, I didn't know that there was a job when I was a kid. <laughs> I didn't know that there was a job, a casting director. Um, I always was enamored of films and TV. And I feel like I've been studying actors my whole life. Um, and I, you know, I went to the movies to try to ease, um, you know, loss in my own family. So, um, you know, movies mm. and TV were really important to me and theater. Mm -hmm. um, and I always wanted to work in it, but I thought I would be an actor, I think, when I was really young. Uh, that makes that's resonating a lot. Like even just there's it comes out in here too. like your love of actors and like I, I mean, it's 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 palpable. Like I can tell like you <laughs> you really adore actors. And I it's do. I do. They have a gift. Uh, yeah. Gift. Yeah. Did you. So did you ever did you get did you act ever? I acted in plays like in school and stuff, you know, and okay. I I act. I went to UCLA in the theater department and I acted a little bit, but um, when I went to college, I really uh, became passionate about directing actors. Mm -hmm. So I was directing a lot of plays at UCLA. And uh, that's when I uh, just realized I'm good working with actors and not being one. I was too yeah. self-conscious to really be a really good actor. So, but directing actors, I felt like I, I was good at it. So yeah. I, I, really, I graduated thinking I would be a regional theater director and I worked in regional theater. My first job out of college was working at South Coast Rep as an ASM. Oh, I so I was that. on the road and then twists and turns of a life, you know, long story short, um, you know, flash forward a few years uh, when I was deciding what I would do in entertainment um, and then realizing there was this job called casting director. <laughs> That's when I thought, oh, that's a perfect job for me. It uses the skills I already learned and that I love and that I'm good at. Um, and I get to work on big TV shows and films. So, okay. And then it turns out I knew someone who knew someone 
um, you know, who worked in television casting. And that was uh, Jeff Greenberg, who was my first mentor and the first office I worked in in L.A. And I started as an intern there and then moved up really fast because I loved it. And that that's the story there. I love it. No, thanks for that. If there was if you, like looking back at that, like maybe not the 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 question that I'm thinking of is it's like if anybody wanted to get started in casting, like what's one piece of advice like from from your years and experience? Um, like what's one thing or two things that you wish that you would have known when you started that, you know, now um, it's a stressful job. It's really, really stressful. There's a lot of moving pieces. And I've recently made a, a, a complete list of duties that casting director does, which is in the book. There's a lot of moving pieces. You have to be really good at organizing and good at spotting talent. And you have to go see a lot of plays in, in you know, TV and film. Um, and you have to keep track of people and you have to upload and download <laughs> and get to be a filmmaker now. And it's just really stressful. I didn't realize yeah. it's stress. And I think in the end, it was a little too stressful of a job for me because I have anxiety and I have since I was a kid. So mm. probably wasn't the greatest job for me, although it was a dream job. That's fascinating how, because how many years did you actually work? Because I know you've worked on a ton of shows. I a mean, kind of stuff. A, I mean, a ton of again, stuff. I was in the trenches of mm -hmm. network casting for 10 years. 10 years. Okay. Um, and then I, you know, and then after that, um, I was casting commercials and I was casting indie films and I was casting at LA Theater Works. And, you know, I was able to make a living by casting for years and years. I love it. For two I decades. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Um, if, if you, oh gosh, like if you, I mean, you're already doing it. I don't even have to ask that question. You've kind of already answered it and you answered in the book too, really talking about, you know, championing and championing and, and encouraging create people to create their own content and not rely on, on everybody else um, to be, I'm going to use air quotes successful. Cause obviously I think that we all have certain parameters for what that looks like. Um, or, and you can disagree with me. <laughs> no, um, I agree with everything you're saying. So, so has there, has there been, I'm, I'm, I am curious, has there been anyone, you mentioned Jeff, Jeff Greenberg, has there been anybody else that has been really influential over the course of maybe even while you're in Atlanta? Um, Cause it, I, just curious. Gosh, so many people. I mean, all the writer producers on Frasier, Arrested Development, I was privileged to work on, um, oversaw the casting of The Office. I mean, I mean, I got to work with the best of the best. Yeah. Um, oh, gosh, that's such a wide open question. It's a wide and, open question. Uh, yeah. And then here in Atlanta, I mean, I wouldn't have come to Atlanta if not for Rob Mello. Um, who okay. first invited me to come and do a workshop at his acting studio. And I'd never been to the South before and, <laughs> I came and had a great time. And I thought, oh, wait, uh, this is a great city. Um, and then I got a job casting in Atlanta, an indie film. And I came and stayed for six months doing that. And at the end of that period, I'm like, I'm just going to stay. <laughs> and that was in 2000. Yeah. And I have not regretted that decision at all. It's just a, it's a perfect city for artists to live in right now. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. That's, and, and, and as one, the weather is cooling down here. I always have to mention the weather with the Twin Cities. I know, with, right. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to get colder, <laughs> but um, is there like a, a lot of the people that I know will listen to this, the audience, a lot of them are, are artists and actors. Um, if there's one myth, like within the acting realm that you could, um, dispel or get rid of? Is, is there one that you could think of that you would share? Yeah. Um, sometimes when you ask somebody why you want to be actor, they say, I like to be other people. Like I like mm -hmm. being other people. Um, and that's kind of not the way to go. The, the thing is you got to reveal mm -hmm. yourself because that's what's going to make you unique. You're not putting on other identities. You're basically yourself in whatever situation you're placed in, especially for TV and film. Mm -hmm. So you're not putting on an act. You're stripping away whatever facades you have to get along in the world. <laughs> and that's what we want is that raw self. Yep. So you have to be really comfortable with being your raw self, both dark and light. Yeah. Yeah. And, and Yes, I'm, I'm pointing to your book because I think that um, you even expound on that. And, and it's and it's really, I don't know, it's just something that really resonated for myself as well. So I, I love that. 
Um, I do want to, is there anything else that you'd like to say before? I, I do want to kind of wrap this up because I know I try to keep these under a certain time frame. Yeah. Is there anything um, else? I guess really honestly now, an actor can't just wait for auditions. That is no way to live. And that is not yeah. how you're going to get um, traction in this industry. You have to be performing constantly. You have to be doing plays. You have to be doing stand up. You have to be creating your own content, even if it's just simple monologues that you write yourself because do not use copyrighted material. You write it yourself and you can just um, videotape that on your iPhone and post that. It's really important to keep keep performing and keep creating because you will be found that way. But you're not going to be found by just being one of thousands of submissions that comes through on our breakdown services. That's not how you're going to get it. <laughs> And I find that actors that do plays, A, are discovered. If you think of all the really good actors nowadays who are big stars in film and TV, they all got discovered on a stage. And I feel that actors who do theater are just more agile for auditions and more agile on a set because they're just practicing more. They're, they're acting all the time. Yeah, yeah. And oh, absolutely. No, that's so, that's so true and so... Um... I mean, to reference the Guthrie, like when I've worked with them, there's a process that they go through. I mean, every, every theater does when people are, when actors are performing and they, um, I see that reflected in a, in a, in a slightly different way. I'm sure you're aware of that. You know, when you're working on a film set, it's a slightly different process, but there is a process and Not you really. have to follow. Yeah. Um, and, um, there's, you know, as far as like the, I hear, I hear misconceptions about theater actors that they're too big for camera. I hate that when people say that really each person needs to find their own calibration of on camera and there's no blanket statement. You can't say, Oh, theater actors, they're too big for the camera. That's not true at all. Everyone has a different calibration and a good actor. I contend is a good actor on stage, film, TV, commercials, whatever. Across the board. Mm -hmm. Across the board. Yeah. <laughs> That's uh, I, I agree with you on that. So I have three kind of wacky Crazy okay. lightning round questions Go for, for you, it. Kathy. You ready? <laughs> All right. It. Here we go. Drum roll. One. Weirdest thing you've ever eaten? Uh, frog legs. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where that came from, but. <laughs> what would your weapon of choice be in a zombie apocalypse? Invisibility. <laughs> oh, love it. What fictional character? do you think that you are most like Jane Eyre? Oh, okay. Okay. I don't know why that surprises me. Um, I think kind of that surprises kind of, me too, but it's the first thing that popped into my mind. I, I think that's really fantastic. Oh, thank you so much, Kathy, for taking the time today to join me and talk a bit about your, your creativity, your passion, your, your book, um, and, and some of your takes as a casting director. Um, I, 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 for anyone that's listening that wants to find out more information about Kathy, you can go to uh, www.youritfactor.net and you can find out tons of more information about Kathy and what she has going on. I appreciate everybody listening. If you want to find out anything more about me, you can find me at paulcramactor.com. Thanks, everyone.